Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different and we're being more of a follower. We're talking about the Apple event that happened on September 10th. So strap in, get your popcorn, let's get going. Welcome back to Visual Access for new subscribers. My name is Hunter and yes, my hair always does look like this. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of a disclaimer here. I was not all of that impressed with the Apple event that happened. I've definitely been more impressed, you know, going back. I was way more impressed with the Showtime event, WWDC, but the actual hardware events, you know what, you be the judge. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of the Apple event, if you were excited, what parts went to you. But let's recap exactly what went on. So the first thing that got talked about was probably the more anticipated still coming uh, feature to the new Apple lineup, and that is the streaming service Apple TV Plus and also Apple Arcade. So of course we're expecting original content to be launching on, in November with Apple TV Plus and also 100 or over 100 new exclusive games for Apple Arcade. Uh, so that's gonna be awesome to see. That being said, we also do have pricing. $4.99 per month for your whole family. Uh, because I'm Canadian, I'm probably, I'm just gonna do a little quick math. Yeah, so we're looking at probably about $7.99, $8.99 respectively, uh, somewhere in that ballpark for those services. Also keep in mind, Apple Arcade is actually gonna support current Xbox One and PS4 controllers so that was literally something that got me very excited back at the WWDC event, so. Next thing that got talked about was the brand new entry level iPad. We got the iPad 7th generation 10.2 inch. Yeah, that's literally all that pretty much changed. Bigger screen, everything else, including the processor was the same. This just straight pissed me off. I mean, seriously, couldn't you have put an A11 chip in it, not just keep on the A10? So the next product they talked about was the new Apple Watch Series 5. In rumors, uh, it claimed that we were getting two brand new materials that the watch was gonna be made out of, uh, ceramic and titanium. That rumor was actually 100% true. We are getting those two new models. And just remember, this is an Apple Watch Series 5, the fifth generation watch. So the chances of someone spending that extra money to get those new materials, I honestly think pretty good. That being said, let's talk about the two shiny new features of the Apple Watch Series 5. We have a brand new always on display, as well as a compass built-in compass that actually works with the Apple Maps app right on the watch. This is the thing, is that these weren't grandiose new improvements. Yes, it is cool to have. I wasn't blown away by this whatsoever. Yes, the always on is definitely a nice feature to have, but my favorite implementation of an always on display is the one on the Tick Watch Pro. If you want to see what that watch brings, just go down below, check out Michael Fisher's review. I'll have it linked down in the info section. Yes, we're at the part that all you guys and gals probably want to know about. Let's talk about iPhone. <laughs> this is iPhone 11. The direct successor to the iPhone XR. The iPhone XR was definitely the runaway smash hit of 2018. People loved having a cheaper option that still housed a very awesome, and might I mention flagship processor, while paying less than their actual flagship products. iPhone 11 comes in six new colors with an all new purple, white, yellow, green, black, and product red. It touted tremendous battery life, now one hour improved. That's definitely a plus. It now has two cameras on the back and some brand new colors. They really made a heavy, heavy feature on the video and camera improvements. I have a feeling that's because of all the smack that they've been getting from Samsung and Google. But hey, it's still welcome to see because people have been wanting a better iPhone camera for quite some time. That being said, it is time for the creme de la creme of the iPhone announcement, and that is the brand new iPhone 11 Pro and its Max variant. 
No, I am not going to refer to it as the iPhone 11 Pro Max because I think this name is ridiculous. I think it's too long. And seriously, what the heck is wrong with you? So, iPhone 11 Pro and its Max variant. Once again, not too much of a spec upgrade, both these phones, all of the new lineup is coming with the new A13 chip, including the iPhone 11, so that's really awesome. That being said, it was once again a camera improvement. So now you have not two, but three cameras on the back, all capable of supporting 4K at 60 frames per second. So if you think about it, the iPhone 11 Pro and its Max variant are able to use four cameras at the same time for 4K video at 60 frames per second. Right? Now the iPhone 11 Pro and its Max variant, along with the iPhone 11, they really made a big deal about the cameras. And that was really the main overall improvement to these iPhones. Really when you get right down to it, that's all it was. The last thing that they touched on in this event was one that iPhone users have been pissed off by for quite some time and I'm very glad they actually changed this. Now, coming in the box of the iPhone 11 Pro and X Max variant, hopefully also the iPhone 11 if they know what's good for them, a brand new 18 watt fast charger right there in the box. A high five doesn't even cut it. High six! Yes! <laughs> all in all, my final thoughts of this whole event. Apple TV Plus and Apple Arcade, it's cool. I'm going to be checking them out. Maybe I'll do a review if you guys want. Let me know down in the comments. The iPad announcement, if I had to put a word to it, the iPhone 11 Pro and its Max variant. If you're a cinematographer or you like shooting things with your phone, then by all means, this is an awesome and highly recommended upgrade for all the improvements that it brings to a camera. The problem I have is that they're calling this an iPhone 11 Pro. I don't think Pro should just mean camera improvements. I really don't. I think Pro should be reserved for way more improvements. I think the Pro moniker should have been uh, used for a different year of iPhone, not this one. And last but not least, I think that the runaway hit this year is going to be that new iPhone 11. Two cameras on the back are able to do portrait mode on everything now, not just humans. Better specs, better upgrades, uh, some new colors to, you know, flaunt over. That's going to be awesome. Anyway, thanks you guys for watching Vision All Access. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to watch the keynote, by all means, I will post the Verge's 13 minute recap or whatever it was down below, so be sure to click on that. Don't forget to watch Michael Fisher's review on the TicWatch Pro, which I'll also link down below. Check out that second screen technology because I honestly think that's where Apple should have gone with the new Series 5. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I update those so much more than the YouTube, and I wish that wasn't true, but it's just what I have time for. Like, share, subscribe. Three things every YouTuber does want, and I am no exception. So thanks you guys for tuning in to Vision All Access, and we'll catch you next time. What you doing, Pooch? Watching Dad make a video? Good boy. Oh, Maverick likes Vision All Access? Oh yeah, he likes it, he likes it.